welcome back children before i begin with today's class let us take stock of what we have finished so that we know what remains to be done so as far as our literature in english syllabus is concerned i have finished the poems and i remind you for you birches is no longer there in your poem syllabus we have completed the tempest we had done a few stories in class 11 so we are left with the remainder of the short stories to finish our syllabus and accordingly we will start with the first short story out of the remaining stories and the first that we will start with will be b wordsworth by v s naipaul vidyadhar suraj prasad naipaul a nobel prize winning indian born writer this story is set in the town of port of spain which is in the island of trinidad in the west indies now a few things you should remember before we actually begin with the story you must understand that these west indian islands like india were british colonies so the natives had to learn english because they had to talk and interact with the british masters that is why when you hear a west indian speaking english you will see that it has a typical way of speaking which does not bother much about grammar that is called calypso english calypso is a kind of west indian music but it has come to be associated with the english spoken there by the natives and it is called calypso english examples of that we will find in this story another thing the british masters obviously considered the natives as blacks and the natives had accepted that fact also so we will see that the characters in this story do not hesitate to call themselves blacks and they do not hesitate to say that they are not whites they have come to accept that fact another important point to be remembered is this story is about the friendship between a man and a child and we will see how this friendship develops grows and how the child becomes attached to that man and how that man also becomes very close and attached to the child this child lives with his mother he has no father and he is 8 or 9 years old and the child is the narrator of this story so the i in the story is the child who is the narrator of this story these few things please keep in mind whatever else is there i will discuss as we proceed with the story when you start the story what strikes you is the title of the story b wordsworth now most of you have heard about the famous english poet william wordsworth now this fellow is called wordsworth but what does b stand for 
that is not mentioned in the title of the story. That will be revealed in the second page of the story. What B stands for and we will see there comes that point which I just told you that these characters do not hesitate to call themselves Pluck. B. Wordsworth by V. S. Naipaul. Three beggars called punctually every day at the hospitable houses in Miguel Street. Miguel Street is a street in the city of Port of Spain. In fact, this story has been taken from a collection of short stories by B. S. Naipaul which was published in 1959 and the name of that collection of short stories was Miguel Street. So three beggars used to come punctually exactly at the same time every day and these beggars used to come to those houses in Miguel Street where the people were hospitable meaning they were kind and generous and they were ready to help the beggars. At about 10, an Indian came in his dhoti and white jacket. Every day at around 10 o'clock in the morning, an Indian beggar used to come wearing the traditional dhoti and a jacket. And we poured a tin of rice into the sack he carried on his back. This Indian beggar carried a sack on his back and the narrator or his mother used to pour a tin full of rice into the sack of that Indian beggar. At 12, an old woman smoking a pipe came and she got a cent. Cent is a coin, just like a one paisa coin or a two paisa coin. So at 12, an old woman, a beggar used to come smoking a pipe and she was given a coin of one cent. At two, a blind man led by a boy called for his penny, called meaning came. At two o'clock, a blind man accompanied by a boy used to come to get their penny or penny again is a small coin, a coin of very small denomination like one paise. Sometimes we had a rogue, rogue meaning a rascal. Sometimes some rascals would come and ask for something. These rascals or rogues were not beggars. They used to come with the intention of getting something. One day, a man called and said he was hungry. One day, a fellow had come saying that he was hungry. Please note, he wasn't a beggar. We gave him a meal. The narrator and his mother gave this fellow some food. He asked for a cigarette and wouldn't go until we had lit it for him. After having the food, he demanded for a cigarette. And when the cigarette was given to him, he did not move, saying that it had to be lighted. That man never came again. That fellow never came back again. As I was telling you, these rogues or rascals were not beggars. The strangest caller came one afternoon at about 4 o'clock. Now we come to the main character in the story. And this main character or central character is referred to as the strangest caller. Meaning, one afternoon at about 4 o'clock, a strange fellow came to the door of the narrator's house. Why is this fellow called strange? Apart from the behavior that we will see later in the story, it was strange 
because this man was not dressed like a beggar. I had come back from school and was in my home clothes. I told you the I in the story is the child narrator. He had just come back home from school. He was in his home clothes. The man said to me, Sonny, may I come inside your yard? This strange fellow had addressed the narrator affectionately as Sonny, meaning my dear son. May I come inside your courtyard? He was a small man and he was tidily dressed. He was a man of short height, but he was very tidily, neatly dressed. He did not look like a beggar. He wore a hat, a white shirt and black trousers, meaning pants. I asked, what do you want? I told you, you will have glimpses of the Calypso English in this story where these people from West Indies, the natives, don't bother about grammar. What you want, meaning what do you want? He said, I want to watch your bees. A strange request. The man said, I want to enter your courtyard and I want to watch the bees. Now listen. One thing I would like to tell you here. The poet William Wordsworth was a great observer. He used to watch and gaze. He used to see and look. He used to be impressed with things in mother nature. And he used to write poems on what he saw, what he observed, what he noticed what he looked at. This fellow is also behaving like the poet William Wordsworth. He is saying that he wanted to watch the bees as if he was like the poet William Wordsworth who liked to watch, observe, notice, look or see. We had four small grew grew prom trees and they were full of uninvited bees. Gru gru is a species of palm tree which you find in equatorial climatic countries like the West Indies. Okay. And the courtyard or the garden had four such palm trees and they were covered with bees and hives. I ran up the steps and shouted, Ma, it have a man outside here. Obviously, before letting the man enter the courtyard, the narrator had to take the permission of his mother. So he ran up the steps and shouted to his mother, that mother, there is a man outside our house. He say he want to watch the bees. This man is saying, that he wants to enter the courtyard and watch the bees. My mother came out, looked at the man and asked in an unfriendly way, what do you want? We see that the mother was a bit harsh. The mother was a bit unkind lady. There was no politeness or courteousness in her voice. She came out looked at the man and in a very harsh, unfriendly tone said, Hey, what do you want? The man said, I want to watch your bees. The man repeated his request that he wanted to have a look at the bees in the garden. His English was so good, it didn't sound natural and I could see my mother was worried. You must understand, I told you that the natives of the West Indian islands never spoke correct grammatical English. But this man, the short man, the visitor was speaking correct, proper, suitable grammatical English. 
it did not sound natural because the narrator was not used to hearing such correct English and the mother was worried hearing this correct English. She said to me, stay here and watch him while he watched the bees. The mother did not refuse. She only told the narrator, you wait here, you keep an eye on this man while the man watches the bees. The man said, thank you madam, you have done a good deed today. The man is just the opposite of the mother. He is polite, courteous, respectful. So he thanks the mother and says that the mother had done a good deed on that day by allowing him to enter the courtyard and have a look at the bees. He spoke very slowly and very correctly, as though every word was costing him money. This fellow was speaking very slowly. He was not in a hurry. He was speaking proper, correct grammatical English. He was speaking as though he was weighing the words before uttering them, as if he was thinking that whatever he spoke, each word had a value and he had to pay for each word that he spoke. Actually, that was not the case. He was not paying anything for what he was saying. The point is, he was very, very choosy and selective in whatever he was saying because he was speaking correct English. We watched the bees, this man and I, for about an hour, squatting near the palm trees. Squatting meaning sitting. So, the narrator and that man sat on the ground and for over an hour, they went on watching the trees, they went on watching the bees. The point is, I told you, the poet Wordsworth appeared to be a man who was interested in watching and gazing and looking. This man had the same manner or behavior or the desire. The man said, I like watching bees. See, I told you, he has got something which is very similar to the poet William Wordsworth. Sonny, do you like watching bees? Again, in an affectionate manner, he asked the narrator, My dear son, do you like watching bees? I said, I ain't have the time. The narrator said, I don't have the time to watch bees. He shook his head sadly, sadly because nobody has the time to watch. He said, that's what I do. I just watch. And that is exactly what I do. I have plenty of time to watch, so I watch. I can watch ants for days. Have you ever watched ants? And scorpions and centipedes and pongoris? Have you watched those? See, again he is talking about his habit of watching. He likes to watch anything in mother nature. It doesn't matter whether it is beautiful or ugly or dangerous because scorpions are not very pleasing to look at. But this man loves to watch and observe. I shook my head. The narrator shook his head saying, no, I don't watch anything. I said, what you do so, mister? Meaning, what do you do, mister? What is your profession, mister? He got up and said, I am a poet. The man finally said that he was a poet. And like the poet Wordsworth, this fellow also claimed to be a poet. And like William Wordsworth, he also loved to watch and observe and see. The last thing we will see in the story whether actually this man was a poet, whether he was speaking the truth or not, or whether actually he was telling a lie. And if so, the question is, why? Thank you.
Stay home, stay safe.